uh, guys, I'm really sorry to have to uh, do this. Uh, it really pains me to say I'm not going to be able to do a video today because I have this fear eyes filter stuck on my face and I can't get... I can't get it off and I... I've contacted the Adobe company for help with this. Okay, let me give this one more try. Let me see if I can shake it off. <laughs> okay, I think I got rid of it, guys. So let's get on with this bullshit. Oh, person of the day. We got a great person of the day today. Oh, 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 my God. Wow. Oh, he goes right into the dance. Oh, my God. I mean, these mega churches make so much money that they could do these, this kind of amazing, that's, this might be the most amazing performance I've ever seen. It's a 11 second clip. This is an 11 second clip and it's probably the greatest live performance I've ever seen. Okay. He's going like this. Okay. Okay, you know what? Enough. I want to announce the first RM Brown channel contest. Now announcing slash presenting. I am too old and stupid, okay, to hunt down information on what this, on where this video came from. The person who finds it wins an all expenses, <laughs> wins an all expenses paid trip with me to go to this church and praise the Lord at this church with me. Void where prohibited, limited to one person. It may not include an adequate place to stay, and it will be the cheapest place that you can find. It. Also, I apologize if this clip has been going around for like 15 years, and I'm just like an old man on the internet. Oh, oh, you guys hear about this Harambe? The communist shift in Chicago is beginning. God save and us. And don't be surprised if you start to see it pop up all over the place. This Can't... tactic implemented in Chicago. Oh. Chicago considers creation of government-operated grocery store. Wow. The promotion of food equity was okay. an expressed goal in the mayor's press release. Oh. Uh, why is this called, why am I saying food communism or communist policies? Because you're trying to scare your Crime audience. runs rampant. Oh, okay. Okay, that's right, guys. On this beautiful Monday. Ooh. ooh ee. That's right, guys. On this beautiful Monday, we're going to be looking at a guy who, you know, we give him a little bit of hard time. We give him no hard feelings. He has one of the most popular, like, political YouTube channels and makes a ton of money. Tim Pool. Been making fun of this guy for a while because it's, frankly, easy content. Because he's hilarious. He's inadvertently hilarious. Sorry. Okay, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. He's uh, do doing a story here about uh, Chicago. Basically, they're doing research on whether or not they're going to open city-run grocery stores in, like, food desert areas. Very interesting thing for the city, you know, but of course... If it's on this channel, the Tim Pool channel, it will be, uh, it will be shoved through the stupid, <laughs> it will be shoved through the goofiest possible lens. So let's take a look. And I wonder how that'll play out. Okay. It's going to be like Aldi, probably a whole bunch of generic brands that will cost the bare minimum oh. and inevitably become deeply corrupted. <laughs> That's how things go. What does that mean? Okay. You think the food's going to be healthy and good? No, it's going to be garbage. Okay. It's going to be plastic trash. Right. It's going to be eventually too 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 expensive. Okay. You see, it'll be really interesting what happens when a government-run business comes in and undercuts all the other private businesses. Right. You see where this is going? So Chicago's thinking about opening a like a government-owned uh, grocery store. He's like, well, it's all going to be generic crap. It's going to be garbage. It's going to be trash. But everybody's going to go there. <laughs> but everybody's going to go there and it's going to drive all the other businesses out of business. I'll, uh, honestly, I'll always admire the just sort of uh, just turn the camera on, let me riff nature of this. It's What happens when you get a monopoly on grocery stores? I don't know. But... Yeah, then you get no food. You know what's going to happen? <laughs> no more fancy meals. Okay. No more variety. Oh. No more natural peanut butter. The natural peanut butter is too expensive. Why are we going to pay for that? Oh, God. We've got this perfectly good hydrogenated stuff with extra high fructose corn syrup right, right. here. Right. I'm sure Tim Pool's audience is buying the uh, fancy almond butter that he buys from Whole Foods. Okay, so I'm getting pretty scared. My scared meter is rising. I'm getting really upset because we went from uh, the these stores are going to have terrible food that no one wants. Garbage, generic crap. Uh, but everyone's going to go there. And what's going to happen in the end, we're not going to have any food. So this is a very dramatic, you know. But uh, there's actually a pretty interesting thing about these government-owned uh, grocery stores. Most of them seem to be in, like, rural parts of uh, the United States. Uh, this is a story from The Week. 
The small Florida town of Baldwin, population roughly 1,600, is not the kind of community you would expect to incubate incipient socialism. Donald Trump won it by 68% in the two. Sorry, in the 2016 presidential race. Yet, as the Washington Post notes, textbook socialism is what the town has practiced since 2018, when the city government chose to open and run a local grocery store. Okay, here's another one. This is from Erie, Kansas. There's a place called Stubbs Market. So this place, Stubbs Market, was like the only, <laughs> it was like the only supermarket in this little town in Kansas. Uh, if it closed, that would have left Erie with only a Dollar General. Do they have food other than candy in a Dollar General? All I can picture in Dollar General is like sort of war, the most worn out candy. <laughs> it's like if that candy could talk in the Dollar General, it'd just be like, you don't have to buy me. I'm, I'm fine. Okay, so Dollar General, a chain store with poor, a poor selection of produce and fresh food. To find fresh meat and vegetables, residents, many of whom don't have cars, would have had to travel 10 to 20 miles out of town. So instead of having them do that to get their groceries, the city was just like, oh, we could just buy this place. We could just buy this place and, and uh, we'll own and operate it. With the, the people who work there will be uh, government employees. And, the, and here's the thing. Uh, yeah, kind of saved the town. So it's kind of the exact opposite of what uh, Tim Pool has uh, is talking about here in practice. He's like, are people going to start people are going to starve to death or I don't know, maybe Tim Pool's solution was just to leave the dollar, just ha just have the dollar general for people to get all their food from. So then your diet becomes, you know, for breakfast, Mike and Ike's uh, for lunch, Smarties, Smarties and a Smarties and an off brand Sprite. Okay, here we go. This is one of my favorite thing about Tim Pool videos and that he kind of just lets the camera run is because <laughs> I think sometimes, no, this happens like every video where he realizes what he's saying, like doesn't make any sense and then, and then like completely contradicts what he's saying. I love this. Ch check this one out. Here we go. A government run store. Yes. Is going to be mismanaged to say the least. Oh, they will have no incentive to properly clean the floors or wow. maintain the business. Why? They cannot fail. Right. Now, I know, I know libraries aren't all disgusting. It's not going to be that bad. I'm not saying it's going to be a bunch of zombies walking around. Okay. Okay. I guess whoops on that one. When the government runs a place, pfft, it's a disaster, bro. Now, there are lots of examples, uh, which I just am about to think of, uh, that totally disproves what I just said. But nevertheless, I am making content and I'm uploading it. Thank you. Have a good night. You know, are there private libraries? Look, libraries still exist. They Barnes do. and Noble's gone. Right. These bookstores are falling apart. Some still exist in some places, but for the most part, they're struggling. Okay. But libraries will be around for a good long time, so long as people keep saying we should have them. Right. I like libraries, but libraries should f should serve a community purpose. They do, right. And I'll, I'm also telling people of this, too. Okay. So not only am I going to contradict uh, this whole thing with the library stuff, but I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm going to keep... <laughs> We keep talking about it for a while. So this is how the media frames it. Oh. But when you actually read the story, you're like, oh, it's a little bit different. But we can frame things, too. I, I like <laughs> to play that game. Can I play that game with all of you guys? All right, let's of play course. that game. Here's the story from NBC News. Oh, great. A Batman researcher said gay in a talk to students. A Batman researcher said every single person on this planet is gay in a talk to students. When asked to censor himself, he quit. Oh, <laughs> oh. I calm can't believe down. it. Calm down. Is that really what happened? No. Hey. <laughs> hey, I order you to calm down, man. I demand you calm down, and if not, you get this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so this is pretty great. So he's talking about, like, oh, this is how the media spins stuff. This is how they spin stuff. Check the and then check this out. <laughs> the real story, in all honesty, is a guy was trying to explain. He wanted to give a presentation to students on a co-creator of Batman. Right. He wanted to include in the story that the co-creator's son was homosexual. What? They said, yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> and he was like, I'm going to, or I'm not going to do the speech. And they were like, okay, then don't do it. And he's like, okay. And that's the story. <laughs> he didn't just say gay. Uh -huh. They were saying, just don't include that. You don't need to, but let's, <laughs> let's play some framing games. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is a pretty funny little segment. This is one of the funnier Tim Pool segments I've seen in a while. Uh, but first, right off the bat, right off the bat, uh, I love that there's a guy who travels the schools talking about Batman. He's a Batman expert. I think I'm going to try to squeeze some funding and money out of something like this. I'll, I think I'm going to be a blade expert.
I'll just be like, oh, hey, kids. Yeah, Blade. He's f***ing cool as shit. And he does this to vampires. Boom, 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 boom. I'll have a soundboard. And then the teachers would be like, did he just say f***ing shit to the students? But uh, yeah, right off the bat, this is one of the funnier segments from this guy because of the headline that he's reading. It's from NBC. It says, a Batman researcher said gay. A Batman researcher said every single person in a talk to students when asked to censor himself, he quit. And then Tim Pool's like, oh, this, this is bullshit. This headline is bullshit. The media is spinning this thing. All that really happened was uh, a very important part of the story was that this co-creator of Batman had a gay son and they said, don't talk about that. And he said, okay, I, I, then I don't want to do the speech. Totally, totally different from the headline. Totally different. The goddamn media is spinning this as a, this guy said gay and they said, get out of here. And all he did was talk about a gay guy and they said, get out of here. This is, this is, the media's sick in this case. Okay, so this is from the article that Tim Pool's got on the screen there. Nobleman, that's the Batmer, Batmern expert guy, a self-described superhero geek who lives in the suburbs of Washington, D.C., is best known as the author of Bill Boy Wonder, the secret co-creator of Batman. Okay, this guy does seem a little irritating. Gotta just say that right off the bat. It lays out the story of Bill Finger, the long uncredited author who helped create Batman and other comic book characters who would do this to the Joker. Boom, boom. They do that, and then Joker goes like this. <laughs> it lays out the story of Bill Finger, the long unaccredited author who helped create Batman and other comic book characters. But this guy, this co-creator of Batman, uh, Bill Finger, died in obscurity in 1974. Uh, Bob Kane got all the credit. Finger's only child was a son, Fred Finger. Okay, c come on. Who was gay and died? Who was gay and died in 1992 at the age of 43 of AIDS complications? Bill Finger was presumed to have no living heirs, meaning there was no one to press DC Comics to acknowledge Finger's work. So he's so his son's story is like a crucial part of his telling of the uh, secret co-creator of Batman. The school comes up and they're <laughs> the school comes up and they're like, you can't talk about a gay guy. Tim Pool's like, no, 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 no. All they did was tell him to censor a very important part of his story. What's the problem? What's the problem? Okay, so I wonder how he's going to spin this one. Seems pretty, uh, it seems pretty stupid, you know? So how, how is he going to spin this? Here we go. All right, let's just pause for a second and let me ask the obvious question. Calm down. All right. So if I'm talking about a guy, okay. uh, Dick Cheney, <laughs> let's talk about Dick Cheney, everybody. Dick Cheney was the vice president of the United States under the George W. Bush administration. Okay. He was deeply involved in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, these invasions. Yeah. And he was heavily criticized by Democrats in the United States. Right. For what purpose would I include that his daughter is a lesbian? Yeah. Ser serious question, guys. For what purpose? Yeah, if she was a key part of the story. Like, if she died and she was the only one to live to tell his story. You want to frame things? Okay, let's frame things. Let me, uh, uh, let me frame it for you. <laughs> Mark Tyler Nobleman was supposed to talk to kids about the secret co-creator of Batman. Okay. Then the school district politely asked him not to inform the school children that the son of this artist had sex with other men. Okay. He refused and instead canceled his talk. That's the framing. That's the game they play. Now, come on. If you frame it that way, people are going to be like, why is he talking to kids about dudes banging each other? Whoa. Yeah. Now, Boom. of course, what they're really saying is that he's gay. But of course, then, if you're talking to school children, they are trying to get you to the point where he explains to minor children <laughs> what being gay is. What does that have to do with Batman? <laughs> so. Okay, keeps reading the story from NBC News. It should check out the turn this takes. Oh, my God. 11 states ban discussions of LGBTQ people in at least some public schools. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, they lie. They lie. Whoa. They lie hey. about everything. Calm down. Let me slow down for you. <laughs> Rebecca Hale via the AP. Okay. They t they, these laws, they say don't talk to kids about sex. Uh -huh. That's it. Okay. Now, some of them are more specific than that, and they're like, gender identity and stuff is included. Right. But the general concept behind this is, if you were an adult, you should not be going to minor school children and explaining to them fetishes and right. kink and sexual activities. Right. Or that the Batman co-creator had a gay son, right? Because here's the thing. Okay. This, you know what? They're pedophiles. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to pull punches. Whoa. I'm not holding back. Oh, my God. The people that are promoting this kind of language in these books, many of these Democrats, they are pedophiles. Whoa, they want to have geez. sex with children. Sorry, okay. that's the truth. 
Well, remember, he also pointed out that this lady... Wipe your ass with them. ...from the majority report, she's also... A, what do they say on YouTube? A PDF file? Yeah, here's another funny moment, very similar to the, uh, oh, things run by the government are always uh, in disrepair. Oh, wait, libraries exist. Uh, but... So similar to that, he's kind of having a dialogue with himself here. Check this out. I have a friend. He's a lefty. Okay. And uh, he said, why, why are you supporting these don't say gay bills? Blah, okay. blah, blah. And yeah. I, I love whenever I say this stuff, I get these leftists. Well, like, Tim doesn't have any leftist friends. He's lying. Oh, shut up. So stupid. As if nobody knows. I mean, that's uh, that's funny and almost, almost. I mean, if what he was talking about wasn't so, uh, wasn't so disgusting, it would be funny and maybe even kind of adorable where someone's lying. They're like making up a person. Oh, I was with my friend the other day and he said, why is your audience always right? And they should give you more money. And I said, well, that's really something I, I love. He does this all the time where we'll, where he'll make up a person who says something. But I like this part where he's like, uh, yeah, somebody was saying to me, like, hey, why do you do, do this? And then maybe like his I'm lying alarm goes off or something. He's like, a lot of people think I'm lying. A lot of people think I'm lying when I talk about these people. When I talk about these made up people, people think I'm lying, but I'm not. Guess what? I'm not actually. That might be one of the funniest genres of lying is making up a guy. Oh, there was this guy. He said to me, uh, he said, you're the most handsome boy in the world. You know, oh, where is that guy? Can you give me any personal details on that guy? Oh, he died. He died, actually. He tragically, his car exploded right after he said that. I really wish he could live to tell this tale of us having a conversation that serves what I'm saying, but he's dead. He's dead. He's long dead. Oh, wow. Well, what was his name? I can't disclose that. <laughs> the creepy. Whoa. Disgusting. Hey. Idea. Boom. That showing kink and fetish porn stuff to children is sex ed is a lie. Oh, sick. Here's the truth. Okay. Sex ed? Right. What is it supposed to be? All right, kids. Your parents <laughs> have signed the permission slips. They're right. all, they're accepting of you to come into... Uh, imagine, imagine doing this. Imagine having a talk like this about a guy who mentioned that the, bat, the lost Batman co-creator had a gay son. Okay, here we go. On to the next wacky clip from uh, this guy we, who we like to give a little bit of these to. Boom, boom. Give him a little bit of a hard time. Let's check out what he's got here. What is this? Oh, it's a statue story. Okay, great. Yes, my friends, you read that right. Thank God. New York City Council advances bid that could yank monuments honoring Washington, Jefferson, and Columbus. Oh, okay. And Donald Trump warned us. He said they'd start tearing down these statues. That's true. He looked at those statues and he said, it's weird. I don't know what to tell you, man. You know, people talk about where this country is headed. Oh, I talk about civil war or <laughs> civil strife, just whatever this culture war is evolving into. And I do not see how this nation can persist oh. if they are systematically erasing this nation. I know. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Okay, this is another funny one because this is in New York City. Oh, how da how dare they desecrate this city that I have to upload content about how terrible it is. And so they're really pissed off that the Cultural Affairs Committee or whatever stupid crap in New York City is like, and eh, maybe we'll take down the uh, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Christopher Columbus statues. Or we'll put some... And by the way, I don't know who re who would read this, but like an explanation of like well, things they did wrong... I mean, if you're going to do that, just take the statue down. Just take the statue down. Oh, this guy did some wrong stuff, though. Just take it down. I mean, these statues are mostly just pure, like, background noise for most people in New York City. What would be interesting, what would make this story even remotely interesting, would be if they're like, we're going to open it to the public, what the next statue should be. We're going to replace all these stupid statues around the city, and... Just have people, have random New Yorkers all around the city. You, you just submit what statue do you want, and then they could all vote on it. I would love to see where they end, what statues they end up with, you know? You know, I'm my cousin Vince. He's hilarious, so you should put a statue of him. You know, maybe the pizza guy from Fox News, this guy. New York City is nothing without pizza. Maybe just a big slice of pizza. Or a big rat, maybe, would be good. I mean, there's so many good New York City things that could be a statue that people would love. There would be no disagreement. People would walk by and they would get a little glimmer. They would get a stupid little glimmer in their eyes about, you know, you know, you could have like a statue of the uncut gems 
a diamond Furby. I mean, a George Washington statue literally just it just goes in the background. So, oh, okay, it's just it just a statue like that just disappears. <laughs> oh, George Washington statue. It's just like oh, I guess I'll walk by that, you know. Or maybe it should be something common to the New York City experience, like somebody a statue of somebody paying to use like a Starbucks bathroom or something. Okay, so this is the same video about the New York City statues. I, I honestly don't know how he got here. Here we go. Where we bring, we order a bunch of food for everybody. Okay. And the leftovers, only the fresh raw fish, goes to the chickens. Okay. Those chickens are living large. Okay. Why though? Is it because I treat them as equals? Of course not. Is it because they're special? Eh, what? Kind of. I mean, they're funny. They're fun to look at, but I don't think about them all that much. Okay. No, I take their eggs from them. Their eggs fill my belly and make me happy. Ugh. And then we haven't eaten any yet, but eventually we will consume their flesh from their bones. All right. And that's how I feel this country is run by the intelligence agencies. <laughs> they don't care about what. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we should do a little public service announcement here. Uh, if you're ever with some guy on his compound and he starts saying the word <clears throat> and he starts saying the word belly, um, get out of there. Run. Run away from there. Uh, because if you don't, uh, he will be writing about you in his black and white composition books that detectives will find later. I mean, I mean, to, you know, this guy, he's a wacky guy who, you know, he's uh, like, he's a young, he's young minded. Let's just say that he's a young, youngly minded person. But uh, coming off as a bit of a psycho here. Democrats have launched a new attack ad. Those son of a bitches. Okay, what did they do this time? A video. Oh. Of a father whose daughter was seriously abused. Oh, boy. Becomes pregnant. Okay. The doctor says, we'll go to prison if we do anything about it. And then a Republic Republican congressman appears behind him and says, I'm watching you. I love this. And they have the hash. Okay, I was thinking when he first said this, I was like, there's no way this ad could be how he's describing it. But sure enough, here we go. Here we go. Okay. I can't believe this. My daughter was raped. Let's start over, sorry. I can't believe this. My daughter was raped. Whoa. And you're not going to do anything? I'm sorry. They'll put us all in prison if Can't. we do the procedure. He's right. I'm your Republican congressman. We've banned abortion. No exceptions. Okay. She's just 12 years old. I'm not letting you destroy her life. I won the last election, so it's my decision. Okay, I think they should do ads like this. You know, uh, showing uh, how how terrible a policy this is and all that. But uh, it's so surreal when you have, like, one good actor in an ad. You know, in a very serious ad, there's, like, one good actor. And then one guy who just seems like, I don't know, like it was shot in a different state or something. You know, that one guy's a pretty good actor. He's very convincing. He's like, my daughter, you know, you can't do this. And then they cut to the, you know, the Republican lawmaker character. And he's like, I can do whatever I want. I'm your Republican congressman. We've banned abortion. Like, he does seem like one of those actors, like older actors, who they had to, like, hold the iPad with his lines up for him. He's like, I can't read it. I can't read it. The text's not big enough. I'm a Republican. <laughs> okay, this next clip here is living proof, absolute living proof, that if you just do something enough, like, whatever it is, if you just do something enough, you'll happen across... <laughs> You'll just trip and fall into saying or doing something amazing. And in this case, this guy, Tim, tells maybe one of the funniest stories I think I've ever heard. I mean, this is just great comedy right here. He's talking about self-driving cars. Here we go. Perhaps the AI yeah. as this mass networked global machine oh. is tasked with, um, I don't know, uh, reducing global carbon emissions. <laughs> And they say, you have to do it in a way that reduces harm to everybody. We don't want humans dying, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So what does the AI do? Uh-huh. The AI, of course, can't publicly come out and institute a plan that kills people. But maybe you're a petroleum executive. And the AI is a system that, seeing all your articles, sees your blogs, has a prediction in its system that you have an 87.3% chance to push forward a bill that will actually increase carbon emissions in the long run by 0.03 percent okay you get into the vehicle the vehicle is driving and then as it's driving it slams into a tree and you die instantly and it was an accident you slam into a tree and you go like this 
<laughs> that's that's the sound of you dying. This. All records indicate that what happened was there was a faulty reading on one of the sensors, uh -huh. and the car tried to veer out of the way of what it thought was a child, right. slamming you into a tree and killing you instantly. <laughs> Everyone just says, well, you know, accidents happen. Yeah. And we're going to do a thorough review as to what this object was. <sighs> Large bird. Uh, Shouldn't have. Yeah. Tim Pool's right. We got to watch out with these fossil fuel executives and... Uh, Self-driving cars, trying to kill them, trying to do this to them. <laughs> what? Definitely one of our major concerns right now. You know what I mean? Oh my God, guys! Well, there we go. The greatest newsmen of our time capturing, conveying, many say, the biggest issues of our time. You know, statues, self-driving cars trying to kill oil executives. Guys, it's the beginning of the week, and for us, well, that's not the best. It's not the best. But guess what? We still do it. And we still win it. <laughs> we win the week, somehow, still. But I will say... I love you. And I hope you guys have a good week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, hey, guys. Guess what? You're not even getting the whole show. If you want every episode and a whole bunch of other sh**, Subscribe on Patreon. Subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. Just click the stupid little link below the video in the comments. See, right there. There you go. Click it and that, yep. <laughs>when you become a patron for as little as two bones, you get the Tuesday, Thursday patron only episodes. Ah! You also get the weekly book of Lego show where we talk about important books, the questions and comments th th thing where you can ask questions and make comments and all this crap. All for less than the price of a rancid Charleston chew. And for only 25 putrid little dollars, you can become a producer. That's right, support the show and get your name up here. Look at these people. Look at these, these people, it make the show possible, okay? God. I mean, without these beautiful people, this show goes straight into the dumpster. A rotten, you know, just wet, disgusting dumpster, you know, behind a restaurant. So it's, there's old milk in there. That's where this show ends up without these people. Is that what you want? Okay, I guess it's, okay. No, I guess it's what you want. I'll just leave. No, 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 it's done. It's too late. Okay? Okay? Here we go. Here's the dump truck. Here's the dump truck. Come to pick up the show. This is what would happen with no producers. Thank you.